Hi, my name is Kathy, and I'm going to show you how to make a plastic canvas um, kiss ornament. The reason these are so cool is because um, you can hang them up, and um, they also hold a kiss or other small foil wrapped chocolate. Great for putting on a Christmas tree or just hanging around, maybe in your rear view mirror without the chocolate, but very cute all the same. The reason I'm making this video is because I have a book of patterns that will be released soon and I wanted to make a video showing the basics on how to make one of the animals which is a red fox. Um, he's pretty simple to make but um, the patterns themselves only contain yarn and plastic canvas. I do not glue anything on these. As you can see they are just all stitched front, back, bottom and then the yarn for the hanger. So we'll get started by telling you what you will need for this project. First thing you'll need is plastic canvas. Um, you can get this at most craft stores, probably even um, local Walmart. Um, we recommend using the clear plastic canvas. If you use a colored plastic canvas, it might show through when you're finished. However, if you plan on making a lot of these, I do recommend making um, basically a pattern out of colored canvas. Um, that way it's really easy to see and you can lean it against the clear plastic canvas and it makes it a lot easier to cut. Um, so if you just want to take a look, you can kind of line it up and make your cuts from there. So, I would recommend a uh, colored plastic canvas for making a pattern. The first thing you want to do is also get a yarn needle or a plastic canvas needle. Um, I'm using actually a very, a very small needle, a very narrow one. It does have a bigger eye, it is hard to see, um, but when you're stitching some of these, you will need a smaller needle to make it through because there are several holes that will require uh, several stitches, so the smaller the needle the better um, that you can work with. You may also want to have a pair of pliers on hand um, in case you get a little bit stuck. Um, they'll be helpful. I usually don't need one. Um, you'll also need yarn. In this case I've only got three colors, orange, white, and black. Um, I've made a lot of these foxes for some reason, and so today I'm just going to use a darker it's like a reddish burgundy color to make the fox instead of the orange. Um, in the book with patterns, you're free to mix up the yarn colors. I have black for the nose and the eyes and white for the face there. Uh, you can get any kind of yarn you like. I just recommend basic um, acrylic yarn. You don't need anything fancy. You probably don't want anything fancy. This should be a fairly inexpensive craft to make. It is just a little bit time consuming. Um, an animal this size, um, the canvas is 12 by 12 square cut. Um, there's 12 squares there and um, piece for the ears. Um, they stick out on top of that 12 by 12. And then for the face, we just have the top of the head cut off. So there are three separate pieces, all different for this pattern. And um, once I start sewing and get them finished, the finished pieces individually will look like this. So we have the mouth, top, the face, and the bottom of the mouth. And then we have, this is actually the back piece that has the ears attached to it. So what you have is the front of the ears will face the front of the face completing the look and then the back of this will actually have the ears finished around the back so it's hiding your work from the front. So the bad side of the inside of the animal is here but the front of the ears and the back of the ears will be finished on both sides. So that's a little bit tricky. Um, there's a couple ways to do your stitches. Um, when making these, some people will stitch differently. There's probably a right way and a wrong way to do it. 
Um, here's two examples of backs that I've done at different times. Um, this one right here uses less yarn. You can see the smaller stitches in between the holes. And this one I've stitched it opposite and leaving larger stitches. So this one's going to use up a lot more yarn probably than what we would recommend in the book. Um, this is what we base the um, yarn length on is this stitch here. It does make it a little bit harder to finish off and secure the yarn. So you may want to make a row or two like this so it's easier to finish off your yarn. Um, if you're pretty confident in what you're doing, I would recommend go this way. It does look a little bit messier, but you aren't going to see it with the finished product. Um, you can see here that generally you see the bottom of the inside of the mouth and that's it. And all people really care about is what's inside. So um, we'll get started here. I've already got my pieces cut. Like I said, they're 12 by 12 and there's three pattern pieces. There's just a 12 by 12 square. That's the bottom. The square with the ears and part of the top cut off. And then this is the face piece, again with the top cut off so we don't have a pointy head. A lot of the older patterns out there are very cartoonish. Um, my designs are more natural looking, a little bit more modern looking, um, simple, few colors. Um, and when you get all the animals together, they look great in a set. So I don't want to spoil it, but you can see here I have a fox pattern, a raccoon pattern, and a gray wolf pattern. All very simple and easy to make. Also some smaller patterns that use a 10 by 10 base square. Of a mouse and a red squirrel or whatever you want to make them out to be. So the first thing you'll do is you will cut your canvas um, based on the pattern in the book. Um, each animal will have a different pattern. I have several animals with different ear shapes and face shapes. So this is the uh, pattern the fox will use. Um, you want to have your needle ready. Um, in most cases, a full square that's 12 by 12 using the smaller back stitch will use only about 3 feet of yarn, which gives you plenty to secure your, both of your ends at the beginning and at the end. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with this uh, burgundy red instead of the orange just because I have so many orange foxes. I'm going to measure about three feet, uh, maybe a little bit more just to be sure. We're going to cut that. I'm going to get this on the needle. Um, some people might be like, well, that's not going to fit on this really tiny needle, but if you pinch the yarn between your fingers and take the eye of the needle and slide it down through your pinched fingers catching the yarn in the middle you should be able to get it through I've done this a few times so I got that first try almost um, so the first thing I'm going to show you just because it's the simplest is just starting with the first square. Um, you want to make sure when you cut your canvas you've cut all the um, ends off from the other rows all the way around. Um, in this case I got a little bit on there so I'm just gonna snip a little bit more of that off. If you're confident you can also round the corners off a little bit you don't have to do that. Um, but I'm going to show you how to start your yarn because this is a key key factor when making these. Um, you don't knot the yarn. What I do is I lay it against the first row that I'm going to stitch. So let me get you a better view here. So I'm just going to lean it against the first row, and this is the back. This will be the back of um, or the inside of the animal. So then what I'm going to do. is I'm going to start stitching 
from the opposite side of where the end is at. So I'm going to start stitching over here in the corner and the end's going to be inside here. So I'm going to make my first few stitches so you can see what I'm doing. And with all of my patterns you will notice that the stitches are all facing down towards the corner. There's several way to, ways to stitch plastic canvas. Um, but I think this way looks nicest, especially with these animals, since the corner of the noses are pointing down. It makes a nicer, more even, consistent look. And when you first start out with the yarn, um, it's going to be a little bit cumbersome in the beginning because it's so long, but it will wind down towards the end. So I'm just going to make one more stitch here. So you can see what I've done for the front is stitched diagonally and the back, if you can see, the stitches go across and I'm securing the end of the yarn as I go. So as I finish this row, this um, end of the yarn will be completely secured. They generally don't come undone. Um, you just got to make sure you leave enough length there, probably through half of the canvas piece about six squares is enough you don't need to do any more than that so i'm going to continue stitching this piece and just show you once i get through the second row here how this is going to look and as you can see i'm going through and then back in at an angle okay so now I have two rows stitched so you can see the front there nice even stitches and the back you can see the smaller stitches um, going along the back side there so I'm just going to continue this whole square until um, I get to the point where I need to wrap um, the bottom of the mouth because this is the bottom piece. Um, in this case it's all just a solid color and the bottom lip edges will be wrapped because it will not be attached to anything. Um, it will be where it, the mouth opens. So that's this piece right here. So um, I'm going to finish this piece and then we'll move on to the next one. So I'm just getting to the end of that first piece, which is the bottom piece. So I'm just going to continue stitching this till the end here and then show you how to finish off the yarn. And while you're doing this, it's helpful in case you make a mistake, is to try to get your needle not to touch any of the existing yarn threads, because if you go through it, um, it's a lot harder to take out. You'll have to take the needle off and pull the yarn through um, and then re-thread um, your needle. So um, it's good to be a little bit careful when doing this. In case you do make a mistake or get a knot um, by accident another thing that will happen is that as you do this the yarn will get twisted and you'll have to let it um, untwist to keep going so I've reached the last hole so this is what the um, bottom piece is going to look like now I have two things I need to do I need to um, secure the end of the yarn and on this piece I also need to finish off the bottom which is again the opening, the bottom opening of the mouth. So that piece will need to be finished off because it will not be connected to anything um, when we go to put the pieces together. So the first thing I'm going to do is run my needle through these threads up to this corner. Um, I don't need to run it through all of these, that'll actually be kind of hard. Um, I would definitely need pliers to pull that through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of skip to the end and just start it through the last um, five or four stitches.
and I did stitch this kind of tight so I'm going to have a little bit of a tough time going through here again which is another good reason to maybe use that other stitch a couple times just so you have an easier way to get your uh, needle through there so I put the needle through those stitches and I'm just going to pull that through because it really shouldn't be that difficult I just made my stitches really tight okay so what I did was I kind of cheated went through the last three there but it's gonna be okay because I still have to wrap this so this isn't the end of the yarn um, this is just for me to get it up to this corner here so you will need to do this when making yours um, to keep that piece secure so now what I'm going to do so I'm going to make sure this piece stays up where it's going to attach to the back piece up here, or rather down here. So I'm going to edge this, this area here, and I'm sorry if I can't see that. So I'm going to start by going through this first hole. I'm not going to do anything with the corner holes because... Um, they are going to get attached to the other pieces and I'm going to need room in those. So I am going to leave this corner piece open um, because it will have several stitches going through it when I attach it to the other two pieces. So, and as you can see, um, my stitches remain the same direction. It doesn't matter if you screw this up. Um, you honestly... These are going the opposite direction on both sides. It doesn't really look that bad. This one's going the way I'm stitching it now. Um, you might even get it to where on one side, like this little guy here, they're stitched up and down, and then the other way they're stitched in. You really can't tell. It just depends on how much of a perfectionist you are or if it bothers you. Um, for me, by the time the, the product's finished, I don't really notice it too much although I do try to keep the stitches going the same direction um, and where that's gonna make a change is when you get down to the corner piece here you're gonna have to go through this maybe two or three times to cover up that corner this is the bottom of the mouth so you don't really want that canvas showing so I'm gonna actually go through it twice before going on to the next row um, and then here too to get that same angle, you're actually going to have to, little trick, <laughs> which is not in our book, um, you can kind of stitch through here because you will need to go the opposite direction to get that same stitch angle going the other way, which I did not do correctly that time. So I didn't go through any of the yarn, so I didn't have a problem running my needle back through. Um, so I just need to come this way. It's going to be a matter of which way you go around that's going to determine which way the yarn is threaded and looks. So as you can see, I've got the yarn going in the same direction with a little more on that corner, that bottom corner piece just to cover the canvas. So I'm going to continue doing this until I get to the other side. And there. So that is the bottom of the mouth. And once I've gone through this last square, again leaving this other corner open because that will be attached to the other two pieces, I'm now going to go through here and the back and secure it. And here I have the other um, end of the yarn where I started. Um, I could probably run it through there. You just have to be careful that you don't undo that piece as you're pulling this through. So you can go back through those loops. 
but you're going to want to hold this so nothing comes out as you pull the needle through. Just so you don't lose that first piece that you secured. And the yarn may bunch up or tangle a little bit. And there you go. Yarn secure, so now I'm just going to cut that end off. Right there. If you want to, you can loop it through the last start again so it secures it a little bit better. Um, it's totally up to you. Um, but this will be the, the bottom opening of the mouth. So, this piece here. So the next piece I'm going to do is the face. Um, so that's the piece with the top cut off a little bit. This piece is a little more difficult and can be tricky because of the line going across. When you're doing your stitches, you're doing them this way. So you got to make sure that you don't overstitch or understitch to make sure you get this straight line going across here. Um, the nose will also be a little bit tricky because you can't really um, continue the lines all the way through. So what I will generally do is when I get to that point, I will stitch the nose down. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start my thread again. I'm actually going to start in the top here um, and do it the same way I started the last piece. I have about two, two and a half feet of yarn to start um, because it's only taking about half of that up. So I don't want to cut a full three feet of yarn. Um, you do want to cut your yarn before you start this so you can secure it like I just tried to do. Um, you can't really leave the yarn on the ball because um, that won't work. Because um, once you start stitching, you're going to um, need the length that you're pulling through to complete it. You won't be able to pull the ends through. So, So here again, when I get down to that corner, I'm leaving that corner empty because that will be attached to the other two pieces. I have a little bit of fuzz on the back where the end is. It's not a big deal. You probably won't notice it when you're finished or you could snip it off. Um, so now what I need to be careful of is that I continue this straight across and I don't um, start stitching at the wrong section. You can see it alternates white, orange, white, orange. Um, so what I got to do on this next row is actually start a tad over before I go back. So it is going to look a little bit different on the back side for that one stitch. And don't worry about the back. If the front looks fine and you went the wrong direction and you stitch the back differently on a row, um, there's no need to pull out the thread as long as you've cut enough. Um, the patterns all have what I believe is a little bit extra in the measurement, so you should have um, at least six inches at the end to cut off. And not to be wasteful, but if you've ever worked with yarn or any kind of string um, doing uh, macrame or um, like paracord knotting, you know that it's better to have a little extra to cut off um, than it is to run out too soon because you can't secure it. So here at the top, um, I do want to go around these little um, inlets here. Um, I missed it on that first row because I wasn't paying attention. So I'm just going to go back through and just do that. So you can see I've just gone through the valleys. Oops, sorry. Just through the valleys there. 
and not worrying about the peaks. Um, this section will be all stitched together to another piece. So you do want to leave it as open as possible, but you don't want to leave any holes that when you finish are going to be showing when you're done. So I like to do that um, just to make sure I don't have any gaps in my stitches. So I'm going to continue doing this until I get to the nose piece. And we'll pick up again there so you don't have to sit through this monotony of stitching. So I've come to the point where I'm going to go down and stitch the nose. So I've come to this first stitch of the next row and started it. And I'm going to stitch straight down and kind of back up. Um, do this however you feel comfortable. Um, you can go diagonally all the way down and then come up the back and start stitching your row again so you don't see the work. Um, there's different ways of doing it um, so I'm just going to go ahead and um, start by stitching a diagonal row and most of the noses on my critters are three stitches wide generally. Um, some of them are a little different. I'm, gonna go back and stitch it. I'm just going to stitch it all the way down um, fully and then run my string back up the back, or yarn rather. This will not be perfect on the back side, as I'm going to show you here in a minute. But I do go all the way down to the corner to the tip of the nose. You can see that in the front. You can see it's kind of a mess in the back. Um, what I'm also going to do while I'm down here is um, my instructions on my pattern might say to just edge the whole thing in white, which you can do because you're not going to see this bottom of the nose because it will be all covered in black. Um, having the stitches there will kind of poof the nose, um, but you do want to finish it off. You don't want to just leave the plastic canvas um, down there. So I'm actually going to um, stitch the bottom with this color just to help secure it. And I'll be done with this and I have to worry about going around the corner here. And again, you're not going to see it, so you can see I just edged it a little bit there. And then I'm going to run my needle back up through here, which because of the way I had to stitch that, I've got some nice big stitches to go through. So I'm just leading it up. I'm not going to cut the yarn. I'm just pulling it back through so that there's no loose end there. And then continue stitching my diagonals here. And I'm going to keep stitching this till I get to the other side. And we can get started on the white. So as you can see, I finished um, stitching my red or orange um, area on the fox, leaving both corner pieces open. And so now what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to have to stitch in the white. The black will always be last. And you can see back here again, not the greatest for securing my stitch, but I'm just going to go through here and go through a few pieces of yarn here and pull that through. Just to secure it, I am going to loop this back through that last stitch just to make sure that this stays secure. 
So I'm only going, I went through and then I'm only going back around one last stitch there just to secure it a little bit better before I cut it. You can also leave a little bit of that hanging off. As you can see, I cut about two, two and a half feet. I have enough left if I screwed up and realize I missed a stitch over here, over here, I can go back and fix it, or I did something wrong with the nose. You have a little bit of length to uh, fix your mistake, because the last thing you want to do, if anyone has ever done this, is unstitch all these little stitches to get back to where you made the mistake and start over. It's easier just to have a little bit of yarn left over and then go back and fix it. So I'm going to start with the white next. I'm going to cut again about two feet of white, maybe a little more. Let me get that on my needle. Again, pinching, as you can see, just pinching the yarn through the eye of the needle. As you can see, you kind of just get a little bit through and you just pull it through. So now I'm gonna secure this um, in the back of the burgundy. And a great place to do it is where you started your burgundy here and go the same direction down through that. And because this is at the top, um, this isn't gonna be seen at all because it will be stitched to the other piece. And I must be making my stitches really tight today because nothing wants to get through these other stitches. It could be getting caught on the yarn also, the yarn threading. But once you get it, it will pull through. And I'm going to secure this. I'm going to go through that loop one more time. And secure. And I can cut a little bit of this off because I did re-loop it through that last stitch. Because um, I don't want that much sticking out. So. Cut that there. And that should hold it. And I'm going to start stitching the white. And the same thing. You just want to stitch down through, probably going the opposite direction just so you get your rows a little bit longer. So I'm going to start by going down, down the face first, and then back up by the nose. Once you get down to the bottom here, you can actually do this two ways. You can edge this line back up and then start this next row here. Or you can continue filling in the white on both sides and then wrapping the edge all the way around. Um, it'll waste a little less yarn um, doing this side first, cutting through, and then finishing on the end. Um, it might be easier just to do it now, so I'm just going to go ahead and edge it now, although the instructions in my book will tell you to fill it in and then edge it last. Um, either way, um, it will work fine. So I'm just going to edge this, and then once I get to this point, I'm going to stop again and continue this on the other side. And once I'm done with my white, um, we'll jump over to the black and stitching the nose and the eyes. So there's that. Nicely edged. And I can just start over here on my next row. And I'm just going to continue that way, fill on the other side, and we'll pick up with the black. So here I am finished with the white, leaving both holes on the sides open, and I just have to secure my white yarn back here again. Again, this is going to look like a mess when you're done, because uh, we got a few colors going through here. I'm going to try to get this through here. Perfect. 
and I'm going to secure this as well. And if you hear some rustling, I have two assistants with me. I have Mookie the cat and Nash the dog over here. See him? They're just kind of chilling out. We had a pretty heavy snow last night. And they're just kind of chilling. So now I'm going to start with the black. You only need a little bit for this, probably a foot or less. And if I can find the end of the yarn, that would be great. And I'm just going to thread this. Again, pinching it through. Sometimes it will fray like that. Just make sure that you've got all of the yarn through. And I've got the two eyes and the nose to do, so I'm just going to do the nose first. I'm actually going to secure through the back here because I had some bigger stitches and it's going to be a little easier. What you don't want to do is see, I've got it caught right there on a very small piece. If you do that, you're going to be stuck if you get caught or need to start over. So you really don't want that to happen. I'm going to pull this down through the nose. I'm going to give it a little loop here. We're all about extra securing today. Okay, now for the nose. Um, I go around the bottom, so I go around those bottom stitches. It's going to make a nice, rounded, kind of poofy nose that sticks out. So again, I don't use any, I don't glue on any puff balls or felt. I just wanted to make these using yarn. Um, another thing these are good for, um, and I've never had a problem, so I'm not a veterinarian, um, but my cat does like to play with them and when you open the mouth you can put catnip in them so that's kind of cool um, get some fresh catnip in there and they do enjoy uh, playing with them so this is going to be one of the harder parts is just wrapping the nose if you feel like you're going to be getting stuck you can also use the very bottom hole to wrap just so you don't have all the stitches going through this top hole here. You can hear that that's kind of squeaking through there. It doesn't like it. And what you're mainly worried about is just getting the majority of it. And we're going to try to go through that again. Again, probably good use for the pliers but since you're just pulling it through one hole it is not so bad I'm just gonna go through the end here a couple more times there's no right or wrong way to do this um, as long as you do it neatly and you get all those other colors backed up so I got that pretty well covered you can see it better down there and I'm still in the front here so I'm gonna wrap this in the back and I'm just going to go ahead and secure it. I'm going to secure it through a little bit of this black hair and then run it up back through the red I stitched for the nose. So I'm just going to run it back up through there. And you do want this, there will be some left over so you can see got a nice rounded nose there and it's covered and then for the eyes so I have to count um, where the eyes start my eyes most of the time will start three stitches in and just um, right above that line there so I'm gonna go ahead um, so I'm just gonna go back and do the eye and this is going through around a total of three holes um, and as you can see, cute little eye there. And then the back, um, I'm just going to go over to where I need to start the other eye. 
I'm not really going to secure it or run it through the back at this point. I'm just going to get both eyes done. There you have both eyes. All set. Now I've got this kind of mess in the back. I'm just going to secure the black thread here. I'm actually just going to go right back down through the nose because that is the best place right now to do this. So I pulled it down through there and I'm just going to lock by going through the thread, probably just pushing it down through all that nice black thread in the nose. You can do this however you feel comfortable. It's plastic canvas, it's not rocket science. Um, it's also good for kids. The needles are generally dull. This one's a little bit sharp, but I wouldn't recommend, probably recommend 12 and up just because of the complexity of some of the, the stitching and running from color to color. So, And there we have the face. So now what I'm going to do is to not bore you more. I am going to um, do the base of the back piece. So the base is just going to be a solid color, much like this. Um, only I am going to leave all the edges bare. It will not get wrapped at all because it will be connecting the other two pieces. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch this and then do the instruction when we get to the ears. Okay, so now I've finished up um, the back piece, the body part. Um, I left the two side holes open. I've already secured my string in the back, or yarn rather, and pulled that through. I've got my needle off and on about a foot, foot and a half of white thread um, to do the inside of the ears first. Now the good side of the back is here. Um, the inside of the back is here. I need the good side of the white of the ears to be on this side. So I'm going to secure my thread on the bad side or the inside of the fox. I'm going to start by doing that with the white. And as you can see, I left my um, the other color yarn loose. Um, because I might just want to use this. It should be long enough to finish the ears. It may not be. In my instructions, I have it um, so that you end it and you snip it and you cut a new piece of yarn to continue with the ears. Sorry about that. My cat likes to tear up cardboard. It makes a lot of noise. So I'm just going to loop secure this. So just secure it on the back side. Um, but I'm going to stitch this as the good side. So um, not too difficult. I'm just going to go through the first hole here to get it started and continue my stitches that way. It's not going to hurt anything to have that one stitch there. And the yarn will get caught on the ears. It can be a little bit of a pain, but not a big deal. And when you start this, you want to make sure that the inside of the fox and the good side of your ears are facing out. Um, because let me go back to this piece here. You can see this is the good side. This is where we'll cover up our white in the back. This is the bad side. I just stitched it differently. This is the good side um, facing front of the ears. So continue doing this. Again, I apologize for the cardboard tearing sound in the background. Okay, so there I have the white stitched in the front, facing forward. 
Now to secure this, I'm going to pull this back through this bottom hole here. And I am then going to kind of guide it through the top of the fox to get to the other ear. So I can start it over there also. And just do the same thing. I'm going to start just by pulling that through and then stitching this side. on the ears a couple times. Okay. Okay, and the same thing here. I'm just going to run this back through here. And back through here. to end it back through one of these rows. I'm going to start a new row where I pull this through because I think there's too much yarn going through right now. I just want to be able to secure this. And <clears throat> secure it and I'm going to set that off so we won't need any more white so as you can see it looks a little messy but this will be facing forward and once I wrap the edges in red or burgundy or wine or however you want to call this color um, you'll start to see the shape of the ears a little bit better. Um, this may or may not be enough. It's about two feet. Um, I'm going to try to do it with this amount of thread, and if not, I'll just end this and start with a new piece of thread um, to finish it off. So I'm going to get this on here. Going back with the piece of burgundy I left from the body, I'm going to, at the same time, edge the ears in the body color and hide, um, this is the back of the ear, and it's also the good side of the back. So I have to make sure this looks good and this side looks good. So I'm going to show you how to do that here. And this is a little bit of a trickier thing to do because what I'm going to do is, this being the good side of the ear, and this is the bad side of the back. This goes inside um, the critter. So all I want to do here is edge with the thread. And then on the back side, I want to take this yarn and cover the back side of the white so that there is a solid red on the back of the ear. So you can see this is the front and the back. I'm looping it all the way across. So I'm not making individual stitches on the back side. I am only doing the edges and then going back. And I'm doing this alternating the holes on the edge of the ear. And I will do this up the ear once 
and then back down again to completely cover it. So you kind of have to go over it twice and then you're going to have to loop the top of the ear a couple times. But again, this saves you from having to get um, felt and cut it or glue um, other pieces on. A little more time consuming, but overall a, a better look. And my cat has woken up and is getting into things. So we're going to see how that plays out. And I'm going to basically finish one of these ears so you can see how the end result should look. And then I'm just going to go ahead and finish the other ear before moving on. And Mookie is getting in front of the camera here. And so here is what my cat's leg looks like. Here's what the front of the ear should somewhat look like. It looks like I've missed a little bit there. I'll go back through. And I've kind of missed a little bit of plastic there, so I'm just going to go loop that back through as well. Kind of holding the yarn as I go. So there we have the front of the ear. Nice and edged. The white in the middle. And the back. All the white is hidden. So these were big stitches across, back and forth, up to the top, and zigzag back down. With the edges being the stitch. So I'm going to stop this right now and do the other ear. And then we'll move on to putting all the pieces together. Okay, so now I have both ears finished. So this is the back or the outer good side. Um, I do have like a little white stitch there, which should not be showing. I must not have been careful about that. Well, those shouldn't be there. They're not too bad. They're on the back. You're not going to really see them that much. Um, the front. So I've got some of my thread carryover, and I've already kind of secured this. I'm going to finish it by going up through a little bit of the edging of the ear here. Because there's not too many places to secure it. Sort of like with the nose. And I went back through the nose to secure that. And I had just enough yarn to finish this. As you can see. Just enough. Let's that off. And it should be secure. And you won't see it. Can't see it. So now when I'm attaching these pieces, um, I will make sure to cover anything up. And actually those little white stitches are probably going to get covered up by the edging uh, when I go to finish this. So to finish and secure all the pieces together, I need about three yards of the burgundy. Um, not three yards, three feet. Or orange or whatever color you decide to make your critter. Pull that right through there. Now when you start this, you're going to want to start with um, the back piece with the ears. And you want to take the bottom half of the mouth here. And in my pattern book, I do have the lines, the edges marked, which edges go together. And in this case, you want both bad sides together. And you want the bottom of the mouth up between the peak of the ears. So you have the good side facing out, good side facing out, with the exception of the whites of the ears. So what I'm going to do is I am going to secure my thread so that it goes to the corner I need to start with. And there are some instructions out there for these um, kiss ornaments that have you connect um, the pieces together first before finalizing the whole thing. 
Um, I thought it was best to do it this way because you only have to do a once through and you don't have to keep cutting ends of your yarn. And it's better to go through with one continuous piece. So that's what I'm doing. And I'm not starting at the corner of the mouth um, because that would just be a bad place to start. Um, so what I'm going to do is I've secured it on the bottom of the mouth. You could secure it either here or on the, it doesn't matter. Um, and I'm going to start by connecting these two pieces through their bottom corners, which is the back corner. And from here on out, it doesn't matter if I go up this way or if I go up this way. All that matters is that I finish back at this point so that all my ends are going to finish in the back. So I'm going to stitch up the first side here. I'm going to go through this bottom piece probably twice to start. You're going to go through it a couple times again at the end to finish it off. Do you want a good secure starting point? And you want the plastic together, and you're going to go through the holes evenly. So you don't want them alternating or off. This is fairly easy. You're only going to have to go through each one once. So you can see there I'm getting the edge, the pieces together. And then the hard part will be attaching the face to these two pieces. Because again, I've seen some instructions that want you to kind of put them together like pieces of paper or one of those folding dice. And then to kind of fold them up and then stitch them. But again, this might be a little more difficult to handle when you've got it, but it's going to have a nicer finish. So now I've got these two pieces together, like this, and I'm going to bring in the top mouth, or the face piece, and now I've got three holes I need to go through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish going through these first two here, and then I'm going to go through the front of the face to the back piece with the ears. And what you want to do at this point is sort of have these in that final position together. And you're going to continue looping through these several times until this whole corner is covered. So it's not going to be a once through. You're going to want to go through them a few times. And you may end up even going through one of the other holes to get that. So I'm going to continue this. And once I get this corner the way I like it, I will pick back up. Okay, so not too much longer, but um, I do have that corner secured how I like it. All the canvas is hidden. Um, it's nice and secure. You, it doesn't hurt to go through this corner a lot because when people are pushing on the cheeks a lot, especially kids, um, the more the better in case it wears out. Um, so I'm going to continue going through the top of the head here. And you're going to want to be careful when you get to the ears. We're actually going to double stitch at the base of each ear. And make sure it doesn't get caught around the ears before you make your next stitch. So here I've gone right up to the ear. I'm going to go through it one more time um, just to make sure that it's secure. And then now is a little bit trickier um, because I have to go through the ear. So I have to make sure I go through the back, but I don't want to catch any of these long stitches that cover up the ear. 
and I'm going to end up hiding these little white accidental stitches I made. Um, so I'm going to make sure I go under the stitch and through the base of the ear. This is going to be a little tight. And then go through the front of the face. And then the same thing back here through the next hole. Making sure I hide any other stitches that I might have just accidentally gone too far with. And hiding, oops. So you can see I'm going through the base of the ear. And I looped around the ear there, just fix that. So you can see I'm going through the base, alternating with the white, and then back side of the ear. So this part is a little more difficult. And if you want to, you can go through these twice. I have on my other ones, um, just to finish it off a little nicer, so you have a nice, um, red row. You don't have any of those white stitches showing. As long as you've got enough thread to do it. And make sure you don't get stuck on the ears. A little more work, but it will come out nice. Okay, and I'm at the top of the head now. And I'm back at the base, the other side of the ear. I'm going to go through that twice for sure. Make sure we cover the canvas and secure it. Okay, so now I've finished um, this corner here, coming down along the ears. So I came down, finished that corner off, went through several times all three corners, bringing them together covering them up and then stitching the edge line back down to where I started. Now this is where I've got this last little piece of yarn here and I'm just going to secure it by going up the opposite end. I've looped it through once and I'm just going to put it right through that edge seam and this can be difficult to pull through. Haven't used pliers yet though. Well, it seemed like I might need them a couple times. And just wiggle the needle, pulling it through. Um, up there. So I'm actually just going to. End it right there. So just up the side like that. And it just seems like my thread's a little loose. So I might actually bring it. Back down towards the end. I am just going to pull it back towards the end. I don't feel confident that that's going to. stay. So I've looped it once around one stitch and then it's going to come back through this end. And if the yarn bunches up, don't worry about it. There we go. So again, hardly noticeable. Come out the end there. 
I'm gonna snip that off. And all done. And you will have to kind of shape it as you get that last bit sewn together. It may want to do this. Not a big deal. Just poof it out. Squeeze the cheeks. Opens. So now the last thing we're going to do is there's probably enough yarn here is just put the hanger on. And you can either go through the top here. It might be a little tight. So sometimes I go through the back, um, stitching even on each side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it up through one side here. And these are my instructions as well in my book. And it's going to go through down the other side. And this can sometimes be difficult just because it's hard to get your hand inside to pull it through. And it doesn't want to come through for some reason. Sure why. I might just have too much thread going through. There it is. Okay, so then you got your loop. I pull it all the way through and then I tie it about an inch past the nose. So I'm not quite measuring here, just kind of eyeballing it. I'm tying a knot like that, snipping the end. And then pulling the loop back through the top. And there you go. A finished kiss ornament animal. Red fox. And I will have a link to the book. And all the patterns. Thanks for watching.